This is Zeko 3, and let's discuss exploring Duna with an aircraft that is capable of vertical takeoff and landing. Atmospheric flight is possible below 5 kilometers on Duna, but it is made especially challenging because the surface air pressure is just 1 15th that of Kerbin's. In the hangar, let's get started on our craft. With a very thin atmosphere, we need to keep our craft as light as possible, although it also has less gravity. Duna's gravity is only 2.94 meters per second per second. That means our craft will weigh about three tenths of what it would be on Kerbin. We will be using a hinge to help our craft transition from vertical flight to horizontal flight. I've set the hinge parameters to just angle 90 degrees and then we'll bind it to a translation control so we can easily move that hinge back and forth. Attached to the hinge, I'm going to use a fan shroud. The fan shroud will be very helpful because I can use it to attach our rotor pieces to. And we're going to need two rotors. I'll just set up the first one first and then I can copy it to set up the second one. With the very thin atmosphere and low gravity, we can reduce the motor size by quite a bit and that will help us save weight on this craft. The very thin atmosphere means that the rotor doesn't have to work very hard to turn the propeller blades and so we can reduce its size by quite a bit. That will reduce its mass, but it also reduces how much electrical current it takes to run the motor, and so that will help us save our power consumptions by quite a bit. While you do get more drag and mass with the fan blades, they produce considerably more lifting force, so we're going to use those. We're going to end up using two rotors, each with eight fan blades on it, and altogether that's still going to just barely be enough to make this craft fly in Dunas thin atmosphere. The fan shroud does have two attachment points, so that's really handy for putting in both of our rotors into this thing. So I'm making use of the rotate tool and the translate tool just to shove everything in there and make it look kind of nice. This week I'd actually been making a lot of different VTOL aircraft, but most of them were for Kerbin. And I decided, you know what, let's shake things up a little bit and make something that can work on Duna. I thought that'd be fun. I'm going to be using these air intakes as a kind of structural piece. They are far lighter than any of the actual structural pieces, and so this will help us make a spine or just an attachment point for much of the rest of the craft. The mass of this aircraft is actually going to be very important. You can see that number there towards the bottom left. I need to keep it under or around four tons as our propellers just will not have enough thrust to get this thing airborne in Duna's thin atmosphere. This is supposed to be a plane, so we need to start thinking about wings. To save weight, I'm just going to use two control surfaces in the back, and this will provide both our pitch and our yaw control. As another weight saving measure, I'm going to use these control surfaces in the back to also be our air brakes. So I'm going to bind the brake action group to deploy these rear control surfaces and that can just help us slow down when we need to try to land or something. Alright, let's finish setting up our propeller blades. I'm going to use a Cal 1000 and bind the propeller blade deployment angle to the Cal 1000. And then I'm going to bind the Cal 1000 to the main throttle. This is how I do most of my variable pitch propellers. So if you watch any of my tutorials on how to do propeller aircraft, this is typically what I like to do. If you are playing on console, I don't believe it uses the term deployment angle for the propeller blades. It may say something like control authority or something like that. I know that console uses some different terms when it comes to propeller blades, so take that into account if you are watching my tutorials and you play on console. It's just going to be a little different. Because Duna's atmosphere doesn't have breathable oxygen, we've elected to use the electric powered rotors. That means we need to think about things like batteries and we're going to put several batteries on this craft just to ensure that we don't ever run out. And to help balance the center of mass of this craft, I'm going to put the batteries on the back side because the center of mass will need to be directly underneath the rotor blades when the hinge is facing down. We are still doing okay on the mass side of this craft, so we need to add plenty of wing surfaces so this thing can fly fairly well in forward flight. Next, I'm going to increase the angle of incidence on the wing by rotating it one tick with the fine placement tool. For the rest of this build, I'm going to be very focused on where our center of mass is in relation to where our rotors are. To keep the craft stable on takeoff and landing, we really need to make sure that our center of mass is lined up perfectly with the center of thrust from those rotor parts. That way it won't want to tilt forward or backward or anything as we're trying to take off. 
And let's add some landing gear. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time just fine-tuning how the landing gear are placed because I want the center of mass to remain right over those rotor parts. So I'll adjust these heavy landing legs just forward and backward a little bit to make sure that everything's just lined up. You can also see the center of aerodynamic pressure indicator on there. I want it to stay just slightly behind the center of mass. Two of these larger solar panels will be enough to keep the craft fully charged as long as we are in full sunlight. And I am spending all this time messing around with these landing legs just trying to get the center of mass just right and I haven't focused on the craft's mass. It looks like we are up a little bit too high and I'm going to have to make some changes just to get this thing to fly well on Duna. We can set up the Cal 1000 now. Because we're running a variable pitch propeller, we need to set up just how much the deployment angle varies. So I'm going to go with just something like 2 degrees to like 40 degrees. Although in testing, I never actually deployed it up to 40 degrees. Just didn't need it. We should probably add a few struts just to help keep the rotor parts a little bit more stable. They're going to vibrate as they spin, so I'm going to add some struts just from those batteries up to the wings and from like the structural pieces over to the part of the hinge that is not supposed to move. As a quick note with struts, don't attach them to any of the moving parts because then they won't move. This is where I finally start paying attention to the mass of the craft again, and I see that we are going to be over. Fortunately, we don't need four landing legs. We can get rid of one of them. The one I initially tested with only had three, and it worked fine. So I'm going to get rid of one of these back landing legs, but that then means I'll have to readjust things and make sure that the landing legs are level and that the center of mass is directly over the rotors. I really enjoy using a hinge for the transition from vertical flight to forward flight. The main reason for that is that I'm able to maintain lift while the craft slowly increases its speed. I've seen some players try to quickly transition between the two and then they have to have their craft nose down for a little bit so they can gain speed and then the main wings will work and then they'll have to start flying level again. Everything on this craft seems to be in order. Let's take it over to Duna and see how well it performs. I have our different tabs opened up as far as our hinge, our rotors, and our propeller blades so you can see exactly what's going on. I found that a deployment angle around 8 degrees is ideal for static lift force on the rotors and we need to then slowly move our hinge to transition into forward flight. But you can see that this thing isn't going to be able to fly great on Duna just with thin atmosphere, but it is capable of forward flight and it is capable of traveling more than 100 meters per second. So that's pretty good. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me on this discussion about flying a VTOL on Duna. I will see you next time.